presently we're involved in a series entitled The Reformation of the Family. <coughs> what does the word reformation mean to you? It's interesting, if you've been attending here long enough, perhaps in conversations with others, someone may have asked you, where do you go to church? Oh, I go to the Reformed Baptist Church. And um, seems like the question may be asked, what is a Reformed Baptist Church? And uh, you think a minute and you think, man, how do I explain it in a few simple words? Well, Reformed comes way back from the early days of the Reformation. And what were that? What was that all about? Well, this tremendous, drastic change it was moving from one whole system of belief to a different system of belief, theology, and doctrine. And we won't try to explain it any further than that, except to say that the word reformation means big change. Reformation of the family? What do we mean? We mean big change in the family. <coughs> We're dealing with the now duties of the husband, next the duties of the wife. Marriage implies duty responsibility. I just used a word. I said marriage implies duty. What do I mean by the word implies? Let me illustrate it. Dad tells Junior I want you to go out and mow the yard. So Junior gets the lawn mower, goes out, runs it over the lawn. The grass is pretty high, so there's grass trimmings everywhere. He leaves the lawn mower in the middle of the lawn. He doesn't trim the sidewalk. And Dad goes out and takes a look and says, I thought I told you to mow the lawn. <coughs> well, I, I cut the grass. You see, there was more implied by the words, I want you to go mow the lawn, than the mere words, mow the lawn. Dad was implying, I want you to trim it all the way around the sidewalks. I want you to sweep up the grass trimmings, and I want you to put the lawn more away. Dad didn't say that. He implied it from previous experience. I want you to mow the lawn. Junior should have known exactly what Dad had in mind. And it wasn't just run the lawn mower over the grass, leave all of the grass trimmings, and go off and play ball with your buddy. <coughs> That's exactly what we're talking about. When we come to the words in Ephesians chapter 5, husbands, love your wives. Don't just go out and run the lawnmower over the grass and leave the trimmings sloppily everywhere and the lawnmower sitting out in the middle of the lawn. Husbands, love your wives. There is a ton if not tons of implications that go at, that are attached to husbands love your wife. I said, sure I love my wife. I told her I loved her when we got married. How long ago was that? Ten years ago. In order to help us 
begin to determine and figure out and examine and see what are the implications of the words, husbands, love your wives. Now, I've been preaching long enough and preached this series and similar series long enough to know that sometimes, you know, you look out across the crowd, particularly when there's more couples available. And when I'm preaching to the husband, the, the wife is kind of, did you hear that? And then what happens when I'm preaching to the wife? Duties of the wives, husbands. Did you hear that? So, listen up. What we're going to do is consider certain aspects of our duty as husbands. First of all, I want to emphasize this. Your love for your wife should daily increase throughout the entirety of your marriage right through into old age. You had her in her beauty and strength. She's yours in wrinkles and illness. Just as much. Your love throughout the years should become more and more precious and meaningful because of the time and the experiences that you're, that you're going through. It's drawing you into a closer union and relationship with one another. The same book of the Bible that says husbands love your wives happens to be the same book in the Bible and the same chapter, Ephesians 5. <coughs> husbands love your wives as Christ also loved the church. Just a few verses later. And if you need to look at it with your eyes, it's Ephesians 5, 25. Ephesians 5, 25. But now look at verse 29. Nourish and cherish her. Sweep up the lawn trimmings. Trim around the sidewalk. Put the lawnmower up. That's what's going on here, folks. Husbands, love your wives. Yep, I remembered her birthday last year. Nourish. And cherish her. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her, he died for her. That might possibly mean you would have to risk your life to get her out of the way of an oncoming car. And you might get killed in the process. Christ gave his life. And you might have to give yours.
But that might also mean that you can't go down to the park every afternoon and play ball with the guys. You might have to die to that. And give your life. Just spend some time with her. Are you beginning to get the implications? Dear ones, the implications are serious and they are far reaching. You have entered into the most serious and the most divine illustrations that exist in terms of relationships when you get married. It is the most serious thing you will ever do in your life in terms of human relationships. The most serious, of course, is your relationship with the Lord. But next to that is the husband and wife relationship. What kind of love did Christ have for the church? It was real. Not superficial. It was real to the very depth of his being. His love was intense. How intense? He died. He died. Intense? Yes. <coughs> always seeking to do what is good and best for the improvement of your wife. As a person, bringing out her good qualities, seeing those good qualities developed day by day, situation by situation, that's intent. That's not just taking things for granted. The husband is to bring out the best in his wife. Christ loved the church. Listen carefully. Christ love the church that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. Sanctify means to make holy, to grow in grace in the knowledge of our God. And that's the husband's responsibility. You are to be the spiritual leader in your home. And it's to be for her spiritual benefit and soon enough for the spiritual benefit of your kids. You are the priest of your household. Let me add to that. You are the prophet, priest, and king of your household. Prophet to teach, priest to intercede, king to rule over your household. That's pretty serious.
Are you beginning to see what I mean by the lawn trimmings? Putting the lawnmower away. Dear ones, do you not see that the minute you say, I do, you have agreed to and accepted for reaching implications until death do you part. Here's some more implications. Constant <coughs> and without change. <clears throat> Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Christ is bringing the church to the place of sanctification so that he has a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle. That's Ephesians 5.27. Do you see how involved the husband becomes with his wife? He is responsible for her spiritual growth. How else is he to love his wife? As his own flesh. Ephesians 5, 29, no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, and she is your own flesh. The two shall be one flesh. To love your wife as your own body. This love for himself. Love your wives even as your own body. This is probably not one that would come to your mind right away, but cheerful. Cheerful. How do, I, how, how do we see that? How do we figure that? Well, because let's think a minute. A man taking care of his own body, whatever that might entail at any time, is glad to do it. Why? because it's going to help him feel better, look better, work better. What? It's for his own benefit. But this one flesh relationship, whenever you help your wife, guess who you're helping? Yourself. Because she's becoming a better person a better wife, a better mother. Doesn't that bring great joy and delight to your heart? To see the dynamics of that working in your house and in your family and the joy and the delight that begins to evolve from that. How does that 
manifest itself. Your words, your language, teaching by example, but by words as well, tenderly in the right opportunities that God may give. Sometimes reproof. Sometimes reproof gently handled in a timely manner is a real demonstration of your love for that person. Let's illustrate that with your children. Parents who do not and will not properly, consistently discipline their children do not love their children. You hate them. That's strong language. But you're allowing them to get by with things that are destroying their soul for all of eternity, if you're not able to move in and discipline that child and correct them and train them and bring them up to be God-honoring children. That's pretty straightforward language. It's true. I ran a bookstore in Waxahachie 18 years. I saw children come in with their parents' children who could rearrange my bookstore in three minutes. I sat there and watched a child go over to the greeting card section and literally take hands full of greeting cards, pick them up and throw them in the floor. And the mother standing there said, don't do that, that's not nice. And the mother ended up having to pick up the cards and put them back in the card shop. Tragic. Absolutely tragic. Give that child six, eight more years and you'll have a demon on wheels running down the street. And cause you so much misery and sorrow you can't even imagine it. Because you wouldn't take that little child in hand at the right time. I thought we were talking about wives. We were. But you see, that's just on a little bit different level. You may do your wife a very kind gesture. If you say, honey, let me just share something here with you. And wives, you should be very gracious one thing. Can I give you an illustration? I think so. It just happens I happen to have one. Don't interrupt your husband when he's talking. Right in the middle of the conversation, you butt in. No, it wasn't. Three of us, it was six of us. It doesn't make any difference if it was three or six. Let him tell the story. You see what I'm saying? So it could end up in a full-fledged argument by the time you get home. This is what's said. No, it was three. It was No, 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 no. And husband, you might have to gently sit down and say, honey, let me just share something with you here that might help. Don't interrupt your husband when he's talking. And so what do you do as a wife? 
who are you to tell me what to do? Thank you, dear. Appreciate that. I'll try to remember it. What are you doing? You're growing. The husband is helping to sanctify the wife. The wife is changing and growing, becoming better in public for her own good. when you're out and about. That's reproof. Gentle, kind, appropriate, opportune. But what are you doing? You are working on your marriage. Strengthening it. And I'm just using one example. Opportune. <clears throat> Reproof. Husbands, I got a word for you. Let me put it this way. Perhaps not on every situation or occasion, but there is one general rule that you might want to keep in mind in dealing with your husband-wife relationship. And that is, always be generous in giving commendation. Notice something that your wife has done during the day. And commend her. Sometimes it might be very wise to give a bit of a commendation before reproof. That can be very helpful. Doesn't have to be every time. Learn to be wise. Learn to be observant. Hey dear, when did you get that new vase with the flowers in it? You notice. You didn't just walk by it. Duh. She went to a lot of trouble. She picked something nice. And you didn't even see it. Let alone commend her for it. Yep. A lot of grass clippings on the lawn. And it's getting dark and the lawnmower's still out there. Dear ones, I'm simply saying, I'm trying to drive home as deep into your heart as I possibly can, that marriage implies more than you perhaps could ever imagine. And you go walking through life, dumb and ignorant of it, and you suffer the consequences. Your husband's um, We're going to get to the wives later. <laughs> You're sitting there thinking, mm, 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 mm. There's a, a lot of material to cover. Here's another one. Here's another implication. Providing for your wife. Providing for your wife. And she should help in some situations. (coughs) 
according to First Peter, the wife is the weaker vessel. That doesn't follow very well in our day. Can't help but think about when all of this years ago, years ago, I'm talking about 60s, 70s, when the first emphasis kind of came out of all this equality bit. And uh, I was living in Phoenix, Arizona. I was going somewhere and I came up to a traffic light and there was a, a team of men repairing the highway. And typical Phoenix, 110 degree weather. And there was about four men out there and one woman. And they were shoveling gravel or something, you know, rocks. I just happened to pull up to observe. And I saw this one woman and she picked up one or two rocks on her shovel and flipped them over and then looked around to see if anybody noticed her. I thought, what are those guys out there working? Think. Peter, writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, the woman is the weaker vessel. Emotionally, physically. what God says. He made her. He knows. But do you as a husband know all that that can involve? Sensitive to her physical needs, her emotional needs, her spiritual needs. Very kindly, gently, guiding, directing, providing at the right time, in the right way, in the right place. Why? She's the weaker vessel. Take care of her. Now that doesn't mean that you have to go around worry, 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 worry all the time about what's happening. Bring in your hand. No, just observe. Be aware, be alert, be kind, be gentle, be loving at the right time, in the right places. Tenderness. What are we talking about? We're talking about husbands love their wives even as Christ loved the church. That's what we're talking about. We're just trying to flesh it out for you a little bit so that you kind of get the practical down to earth. <coughs> two plus two equals four. I guess I'll close with this one. It's about time. Beware of and address and meet her reasonable requests. But if you can, be smart enough to anticipate those requests before she comes to you. Once in a while. Example? You walk through the kitchen, she's preparing dinner. The skillet is worn out. And you walk by. Instead, you say, ah, oh, hey dear, I noticed the other day that your skillet's pretty worn out. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another. What kind would you like? 
you saw it. You were attending. It's a need. She didn't have to come to you. But you anticipated it and were alert and brought it out before she did. What is that? That's love. It goes a long way. Goes a long, long way. Okay, so let's put up the lawnmower. Sweep off the sidewalk. Let's mow the lawn like it ought to be mowed. Do a good job. And be a husband and a wife who dearly love each other. Let's pray. <coughs> Father, we ask that you would graciously take these words and these truths and drive them home to our hearts, Lord, that we might put them into practice for the benefit of one another, for the strengthening of the marriage relationship, the strengthening of the home for our good, for the good of the church, for the good of our family, our children, to the glory of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen.